Just when you thought things were bad enough, three new pieces of science might make us need to rethink our estimates of future sea level rise. Two of them show that the West Antarctic ice sheet may be more sensitive to ocean warming than we previously thought. And another shows that runaway change may be already happening with an all-important glacier that holds the key to understanding sea levels. In this video, I'm going to talk to one of the scientists involved in this new work and explain why climate action has never been more important. Sea level rise is the poster child of polar climate change impacts. About half of it comes from thermal expansion, which describes how a hotter ocean takes up more space. The other half-ish comes from extra ice entering the ocean. At the moment, that's mostly coming from melting mountain glaciers, but increasingly the Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets have been chipping in too. That's driven around 25 centimetres of sea level rise since records began. It doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it's accelerating. A third of that rise has come in the last 30 years. And it's already causing some serious problems around the world. The majority of the world's major cities, from Shanghai to New York to London, where I'm sitting right now, are built near sea level. Which brings rewards and challenges. Sea level rise is already taking town planners by surprise in London. The Thames Barrier, built 50 years ago to withstand a flood so severe that it would only happen once every century, has been raised much more than it was ever designed to be in the last few decades. In fact, its upgrade has been brought forwards because it's no longer fit for purpose. And why? Because sea levels have been rising much faster than anyone predicted in the 70s. And to find out why sea levels have been rising faster than expected, we need to travel 16,000 kilometers south. When it comes to sea level rise, there are two big players, and one of them is here in the West Antarctic. I've spoken a lot about West Antarctica recently, and for good reason. It's doing some pretty alarming things. But don't just take my word for it, because three new scientific studies have also shown that the ice sheet may change faster than anticipated. To find out more, I caught up with a scientist who knows what they're talking about with this. My name is Alex Bradley. I'm an ice ocean modeler at the British Antarctic Survey. Alex is an ice sheet modeler who uses computer models to understand how ice sheets behave. And he was involved in not one, but two of these new research papers. And there's good reason to be focusing on the West Antarctic ice sheet. We care about the West Antarctic ice sheet because it holds a huge amount of ice that could raise global sea levels by up to 3.3 metres. It has the potential to rapidly retreat due to its kind of geometric configuration and it's changing very, very rapidly at the moment, more rapidly than it has at any time during the past 10,000 years. And given all that rapid change, it's important to understand what that might mean for the future. Because if we can estimate future sea levels, not only can we take action to avoid worsening the situation, but we can also also devise a plan to adapt to what's coming well in advance. So the fact that scientists have recently unearthed new processes means we can refine our projections of sea level rise. So we think that there are some processes that we've discovered or identified are more sensitive to climatic change than we previously thought. One of the real difficulties with some of these processes is that they're really hard to observe directly. So ice sheets are really, really remote. You can't put a submarine under an ice shelf very, very easily. And in particular, beneath grounded ice, so kilometers or so of ice sat on top of bedrock, it's basically impossible to directly observe what's happening. One of the processes that Alex is talking about here is melting under the all-important grounding zones of the West Antarctic ice sheet. Let me explain. One of the unique things about West Antarctica is that the bedrock underneath it is mostly below sea level which means that it's susceptible to rapid change if warmer ocean water is able to undercut the ice sheet and erode it away. West Antarctica looks something like this. Ice, several kilometers thick, sits on top of a rocky basin. At its edges, the ice flows out in glaciers with ice shelves in front of them where the ice meets the ocean and begins to float. The point where the base of the ice shelf meets the rock beneath is called the grounding line or the grounding zone because it separates the floating ice shelf from the ice sheet that sits on the ground, also known as grounded ice. The process that Alex is talking about describes how warm water can creep its way under the ice in the grounding zone 
snaking under the ice to melt it from below. And another new paper, this time from scientists in the USA, has also identified a new process of ice melt. It's also about warm water getting underneath the ice shelves to melt them from below, but this one is caused by tides. The Eric Grigno paper identifies in observations another one of these mechanisms that's not included in ice sheet models. So at a high tide, an ice sheet is lifted up and then at low tide, it drops back down. And that creates a cavity in a grounding zone where a lot of warm water can get in and provide a lot of heat for basal melting. It's not clear which of these processes might be more important in which regions, um, but both of them seem to suggest that there's a lot of melting taking place in grounding zones of ice sheets. The loss of grounded ice is what we really care about because it directly adds to sea level. And West Antarctica is such a worry because the loss of this grounded ice is higher than ever before. So our best estimates of sea level rise come from ice sheet models which don't include these processes which have been discovered or studied in more detail. And when we put those processes in models, we think that the sea level rise that they will predict will be much higher um, than current estimates. So future sea level rise might be much higher than we understand it to be today. Computer models are necessary because ice sheets are difficult beasts to observe, especially when it comes to processes happening under the ice. But they have traditionally been relatively simple and haven't included all the myriad processes that happen in and under the ice sheet. But now Alex and other colleagues are realizing that adding these under ice processes into the models results in higher sea level rise estimates than before, which could explain why sea level rise estimates are currently tracking along with the worst case scenario, even though emissions actually aren't. When it comes to sea level rise, there's one particular West Antarctic glacier that may be more important than any other. You may have heard it called the Doomsday Glacier, but let's give it its proper name, Thwaites Glacier. So since satellite records began in the 1970s, uh, the West Antarctic ice sheet has contributed about 10 millimetres of sea level rise. That's about 10% of the global total. Um, and Thwaites is about 40% of that. Those numbers kind of seem small right now, but um, they have the potential to be on the order of meters of sea level rise by the end of the century. That's pretty wild. Despite only being the size of Great Britain or Florida for my US friends, Thwaites currently contributes 4% of global sea level rise. Alone, it has enough ice to raise seas by 65 centimeters, but it also acts as a keystone, meaning that it could unlock many meters of sea level by dragging surrounding glaciers into the ocean with it. That's because it's got some unique characteristics. So the bed beneath the Thwaites Glacier gets deeper as you go towards the center of the continent. Warm water tends to like these deeper regions. So as the ice sheet or glacier retreats, it tends to be exposed to warmer water and that leads to a rise in the amount of basal melting that takes place as the glacier retreats. It's not actually clear why Thwaites is different to other glaciers in the region. We think it's something to do with the geometry. So Thwaites has a very unconfined ice shelf at present. It kind of just sits on the ocean. Whereas other glaciers in the region, like the Smith Glacier, the Pine Island Glacier, have these ice shelves that are very strongly confined by mountains on either side. And we think that the effect of that geometry means that Thwaites is a little bit different to its neighbours. Thwaites is a bit special because it doesn't have any mountains or subsea pinning points to hold it back. Pinning points are regions of the seabed that are a little bit higher than the areas around them. And so what happens is that as the ice flows into an ice shelf, it makes contact with these pinning points and that helps to restrain the flow of ice. Without these pinning points, Thwaites could be free to unleash a chain of processes that would eventually lead to the loss of the entire West Antarctic ice sheet, an important climate tipping point. So understandably, there's been a lot of discussion in the scientific community in recent years about whether or not the glacier, and by implication, the entire West Antarctic ice sheet, has tipped into a new state of irreversible decline. The question of whether the West Antarctic ice sheet has passed the tipping point is really interesting and difficult one to answer. There's lots of different processes going on and within each of these there can be kind of tipping point like behaviors which might cascade further. Um, some model simulations suggest that we have passed the tipping point and there's a committed sea level rise from the region but other model estimates suggest not. So there's it's a quite a complicated 
picture and a difficult question to answer. Whether Thwaites is tipped is a pretty existential question, but like most existential questions, there's no easy answer. So our study suggests that Thwaites might have tipped. We find that even with no further melting, there's a significant contribution to sea level rise from the glacier. But other studies, including some that have come out quite recently, have suggested that the opposite is true and Thwaites hasn't yet tipped. So it's really an open question that scientists are working hard to find an answer to. Even though the, we don't quite know exactly whether the West Antarctic Ice Sheet is tipped or whether various processes have been activated, all of these findings show that with increasing global temperature, there's an increasing risk of passing various tipping points and also an increasing risk of sea level rise. So these findings show that we need urgent action to reduce emissions in order to prevent significant sea level rise from the West Antarctic Ice Sheet. It might be easy to think that if we've passed a tipping point, there's no point in doing anything more about emissions. But our actions can still make a difference. Even if we've passed a tipping point, the amount of sea level rise that we'll get is still strongly influenced by the amount of climate change that takes place over the coming centuries. Simply put, our actions today will still shape the speed and impacts of ice loss in the centuries to come. Every tenth of a degree matters, and less warming carries less risk. We're committed to future sea level rise, but our emissions today will control how fast the seas rise and how much time we have to adapt to those changes. Predicting what's coming is an important first step that will allow us to minimise human suffering. Besides, climate action has many benefits beyond sea level rise. Sea level rise is just not the most immediate threat to most communities. It's the deadly floods, heat waves, droughts, storms and wildfires that will kill people. Cutting emissions and adapting to changes will directly limit the number of people exposed to such devastating extreme events. Thanks to you for watching and to Dr. Alex Bradley for sharing his insights. If you want to see the full interview with Dr. Bradley, head over to my Patreon where you can watch the whole thing absolutely for free. And while you're there, why not sign up to support the channel? Subscriptions from my wicked patrons help me make better content and interview brilliant scientists like Alex. Or if you want to keep watching, then check out this video up here where I spoke to another scientist about taking courage in the face of scary findings about West Antarctica. Ciao!